All right, welcome to day 74, where we investigate the nth Fibonacci number. Now, Fibonacci sounds like Fibonacci, so that should give you a clue. Plus, it's an easy problem, so relatively speaking. I mean, if you've been following the series till now, then you'll see why that is the case. And especially if you're familiar with Fibonacci and how to solve that, the different ways to solve that, then you'll see why uh, that's the case. So we have a number n. We need to calculate the corresponding Fibonacci number. And the sequence is given like a stuff. So for a zero, the space at zero, the zeroth Fibonacci number is zero. The oneth is one. The second is one. And then the third is the sum of the last three. So it's uh, the third is the sum of the second plus the first plus the zero, right, for n equals zero. And you can see the demonstration here. So for n equals seven, so there's zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. For x, what will x be? X is going to be 13 plus seven plus four, as you can see here highlighted in green, right? And that's what it's going to give you x. And then for 10, you just sum generate it up, up until nine, and then just sum the last three, and then you get the 10th number. And that's all there is to this problem. Now for the solution, there are three solutions to this problem. Uh, there's a naive approach, right, which uses recursion. Uh, there is a, there's a naive approach, there's an iterative approach, there's a recursive approach that is uh, memoized, and there's an improvement on the iter iterative approach. Um, and it turns out there's one more, but we, we don't go into that in this series. I just found out about, uh, what is it, matrix exponentiation? Uh, it's in Geeks for Geeks, you can check that out. But Leeds Code and uh, Educative don't seem to go into that because it requires some uh, elementary linear algebra knowledge. So we're not going to do that one. However, we're going to explore the other three fairly quickly. So what's the naive approach? The first thing that comes to mind, right, is to use the same approach for solving Fibonacci. Recursion. Yay. So the recursive approach works and will return us the correct answer. So and what does that look like? The issue is that it does it in three to the power n time um, and the space complexity of all of n. But what does that look like in code? Um, is this the one? Yes, this is the one. So this is the optimized recursive approach in JavaScript. This is what, the, what it looks like. So I have this helper that we're, that does the recursiveness for us. Let me hide it briefly. And well, actually, I want to hide this too. That's the driver code for debugging and stuff. So how, do, how does it work? Basically, I create an array of, uh, of size n for the number that we want to build, right? So of size n, I fill it, fill it with something huge or, or something, yeah, something huge, like the number of max value. Then at index zero, one, and two, those are my base cases. I just seed those, right? Uh, set those, set those, set those properly because that's what's gonna help me terminate later on. Then I call my help, helper, pass in this uh, memo, right? This uh, table that stores previous solutions for me. And when I get there, I just check. Okay, have we seen this before? That's what this this block says. Have we seen this before? If we have, just return that value. If it's less than three, just return it because I mean I already said it, right? Otherwise, do this, right? Call it the same function on itself for n minus three, n minus two, and n minus one. Now the difference between this and the brute force naive approach is that that one wouldn't have this BP, right? So basically, this wouldn't be there. I just put an if statement in here instead that just checks if it's less than three, and then if it's zero or one, return zero. If it's if it's one, return one, basically. Um, actually, no, if it's zero, return zero, otherwise return one, All right? I would have just done that here instead. And then this would be calculating it, repeating itself over and over again a lot, a lot of times. Um, feel free to check that out in your own time. But moving on, I wanna see how, if I can cover everything in, in uh, let's say 10 minutes. So they, these guys jump straight into the best dynamic programming version. That is not the matrix exponentiation one, right? The tab tabulation method. However, a form of the tabulation method. I want to look at an intermediate step that uh, Leeds code had, where they basically do something ingenious. So, okay, they're checking, oh, it's n less than three. Because remember that uh, for anything less than three, for zero is zero, for one is one, for two it's one. We already know that, the base case. So if it's less than three, just check, oh, is it zero? So then return zero, otherwise return one. Then moving on, we create another DP array. Uh, this time this time we fill it with zeros. I mean, I could have filled the last one with zeros too. But uh, in this case, we set 
these things to one just like last time so as you can see familiar then here we're looping from three up until n up in n inclusive right that's why i mean they have the plus one right probably affects it somehow but i mean solving plus off by one errors isn't isn't the worst thing in the world so whether you don't probably don't need to internalize whether you need to add a plus one or put n here either way you can figure it out by debugging your solution and the dp of i is equal to i minus one plus i minus two plus i minus three while looping through n i need this just works right um like let me let me just put a bunch of breakpoints here real quick so imagine we want to find a Fibonacci of four for example right uh as you can see it down here defined for we're looking for any at n equals four um how would we do that uh basically we can see that okay n is n less than three nope it is not then see this array right like of items right up on zero one two three four right because we're going to want this item here the fourth item here and i'm just going to move this up so that i don't mistakenly get in the way uh so i equals three right it starts off as three we already know uh this is going to give us dp at two dp at one dp at zero which we already have zero everything is there and then when we go through the first loop we see that it gets the third Fibonacci, and then if we go through it again right Excuse me, I need to start this again. I think I skipped it by accident. So we go through that. Then we loop again, right? We come back into the loop. And this time it's gonna give us the right thing because we already know what three is. So it's gonna it's gonna say two plus one plus one, which is equal to four. And essentially uh that is done. Yeah. The return value dp at n n is four zero one two three four is four okay so that's all there is to this this version of the this version of the solution let's go into the space optimized version of the solution this is way more intuitive at first glance unless you are more familiar with recursive things and if you've gone through the problems we've been going through the recursive approach especially if you've seen fibonacci before the recursive approach to Fibonacci should come to you naturally um can come to you naturally but even if it doesn't fear not right this i still feel is a better more elegant more easily debuggable solution that you should definitely go for right at least that uh, engineers at nasa uh say that anyway they'd always they wouldn't accept that recursive approach if you work there they would like favor this over that for good reason and without without much further ado there is one fact that is necessary and i think leads could explain this like super well so i'm gonna just i'm gonna just use their explanation so the better approach is like a space optimization approach that's what it, it saves us it saves us space and it just lets us know that we actually only ever need three three an array of three items to find whatever Fibonacci number you're looking for we only ever need three we never need more than three right because all those other ones that we generated up, up until that point are we don't need to store them and what does that look like in code uh basically if we do that um let's look at that real quick take this out of the way it's super elegant such a beautiful solution um i can just put a bunch of breakpoints here 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 and here and then we can look at that okay so what is it we're dealing with the same so let's look at this even Fibonacci of four again so we do the same thing we did last time right we say oh it's less than three check if it's zero if it's zero return zero otherwise return one so that's Fibonacci for one and two return one otherwise initialize the first three things we need then iterating from two up until n let's see what happens here so we it's like almost a sliding window thing um where we we have a b and c here right they're the first three Fibonacci numbers and then we want to go to the we're windowing to the next batch so for the very next one uh, um what's going to happen d is going to become a right so b, what's in b now will become in a what's in c what's in what's what is in c right we'll end we'll go into b 
and then the new C, right, the, the rightmost element, is going to be A plus B plus the OC. Okay, so just observe what's happening here. How A, B, and C change, right? Ignore N here. N is what we're testing. And a 1. Okay? When we step once, right? A became B, 1. 1 was copied in there. B became C, 1 was, one was kept in B, so nothing changed. However, C became A plus B, which was 0 plus 0 plus 2. Huh? I mean, 0 plus 1 plus 1, which would give us 2. So now we've updated C. And then you just keep going up until N. Uh, so, so far, I is less than N. And we do that one more time. And we're done. We get the same form. That's all. That's all there is to it. So feel free to step through this in your own time, your own debugger. And uh, let's look at the time complexity of this uh, solution. I, 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 I favored lead code solution to this. Like This seemed way more verbose than, than this, right? This seemed way more way easier to follow uh, to me. But they're doing the same thing, essentially. You might prefer that. And yeah, so the time complexity is O of N. Can't do better than that. Um, unless you do matrix exponentiation, in which case you get O of log of N. But we don't care about that. Uh, so where N is the number of elements present in the array. And then the space complexity is O of 1, because we only ever need, no matter the size of N, we only need three elements. That's all there is to this video. Thank you so much for watching. Ciao, ciao.